All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So I've got a couple interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I have for you guys today, Larry Wheels hitting a new kind of PR on Instagram today, arm wrestling all the strongest dudes in the gym and beating them all easily. Then at the end of the video, he pays them all off. Now, clearly this video was a joke and just kind of a silly skit and not an actual Larry Wheels PR, but I thought it would be a good segue into the story about Devin Larratt. So Devin Larratt is a world champion arm wrestler. He's one of the most famous arm wrestlers in the world. You guys might have seen the video where he arm wrestles the mountain from Game of Thrones, beating him despite a nearly 200-pound weight advantage in favor of Hafdor Bjornsson. But recently he posted this picture on Instagram that a lot of people have been sending to me talking about how over-muscled his forearms are and talking about how he has kind of an extra muscle on the inside of his forearm there from arm wrestling for so many years is kind of a weird development that came from that sort of training. And I've got to say, man, while the forearms were very impressive and while that particular muscle was pretty cool looking, I was more impressed by the collection of board games that you can see in the background there. I mean, he's got a Super Mario version of chess, which I've never seen before. So shout out to Devin Larrick, crazy forearms, but an even crazier collection of board games. I'm jealous. Now, the next story that I have for you guys today, four-time Mr. Olympia bodybuilding legend Jay Cutler has decided to weigh in on the vacuum pose discussion, generating a lot of conversation with this post that he put up on Instagram here with the caption, while we're still on this vacuum pose discussion, I'm 290 pounds here at Muscle Beach, courtesy of manager Matt. Then he says underneath that, should the vacuum pose be mandatory? Discuss. Now, of course, this post generated a lot of conversation about the vacuum pose because one of the main topics of debate is guys saying that some guys just cannot hit the vacuum pose no matter what. Even in the classic physique division, there's guys that say they can't hit a vacuum pose. So to see a 290-pound bodybuilder like Jay Cutler hitting a vacuum pose in his prime at really his peak of muscularity obviously generated a lot of conversation. And while this photo was very impressive... I shared a photo on Instagram that I thought was even more impressive of Jay Cutler hitting a vacuum pose in the offseason at a guest posing, probably heavier than 290 pounds, hitting a pretty impressively deep vacuum pose in that shot. Now, I think on a bodybuilder like Jay Cutler, this creates a very interesting discussion about the vacuum pose because I think even Jay would admit he had kind of a blocky midsection. I think a lot of people would agree that he wasn't the most aesthetic in terms of the shape of his midsection. But one of the things that he had going for him was that he had tremendous abdominal control. So when people argue about the vacuum pose, should it be mandatory? Should it not be? Should open bodybuilders be able to hit the vacuum pose? I think a good thing to discuss um, when talking about the vacuum pose is how the vacuum pose can enhance a physique that is otherwise maybe not the most aesthetic. So while in a lot of cases we talk about the vacuum and classic physique because these guys are trying to look aesthetic and trying to look classic, what I think gets overlooked a little bit is maybe on a physique that's not as aesthetic, hitting a vacuum pose, the advantage that that could create when you're practicing and training for a vacuum pose, the control that that helps bring to the midsection creating a more aesthetic look on a guy that would otherwise be not the most aesthetic bodybuilder on stage. And I think Jay did a very good job of that during his career, in particular with the front double bicep pose. While I wouldn't really call it a complete vacuum, he did a really good job of controlling his abs in that front double bicep to make his waist look smaller and to make him look less blocky. And I think that's something that a lot of other open pro bodybuilders should practice. Now, do I think it should be mandatory in men's open bodybuilding? Probably not. Do I think more men's open bodybuilders should attempt to do a vacuum pose, or at least if they're not going to do it on stage, the training in the off season to try to hit a vacuum pose to increase the abdominal control, I think would be advantageous for the majority of the guys in the men's open lineup, even if it wasn't a mandatory pose. And even if they didn't hit the vacuum pose on the Olympia stage, I think it would be something advantageous for them to add to their arsenal to help control their midsections on stage. Like we've seen with guys like Rolly Winkler, Luke Sando, uh, Juan Morel. These are very big, very heavy, very muscular men's open bodybuilders that have been able to control the size, appearance, and illusion of their waists on stage because of practicing that vacuum pose. And I think overall, nothing bad can come from more people practicing the vacuum pose. At the end of the day, I think if more open bodybuilders practice the vacuum, the only result of that is going to be a positive result, um, especially for the fans, because I think a lot of the fans want to see smaller waists, um, maybe not necessarily vacuum poses on the actual Olympia stage, but I think most fans would agree 
that smaller waist is the direction that they want to go in bodybuilding, even if that smaller waist is achieved through the illusion of a smaller waist by practicing the vacuum pose and controlling the abs better on stage. I think most fans will be satisfied with just that aspect of it. So as always, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about the vacuum pose. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you think it should be mandatory? Or do you simply think it should be something that open bodybuilders add to their off-season posing routine to help increase the ability to control their midsection on stage? Now, we spoke briefly about Juan Morel there, and Juan Morel is just a couple days out right now from the Arnold Classic South America. And another guy who is just a couple days out from the Arnold Classic South America is Akeem Williams, who just recently posted these physique updates going into that show. Obviously, Akeem Williams just competed at the Indy Pro at the end of March, taking second at the Indy Pro. A lot of people felt that he could have won that show. He's probably one of the favorites to win in the Arnold Classic South America, assuming that he's able to hold the same type of conditioning um, similar to what he had at the Indy Pro. He's probably one of the favorites to win there. And based on the photo that Akeem put out, he's still looking pretty sharp. I mean, he's got the cross striations in his quads, um, and overall his conditioning looks to be holding. So it's going to be a question of whether or not that flight, that long flight to Brazil, um, is going to be something that really uh, messes with his conditioning or messes with him you know, holding water. But I think overall, Akeem Williams is looking good in this photo. I think Akeem Williams is looking to be one of the top guys, the top threats um, at the Arnold Classic South America, which is this weekend, by the way. All right, so next up in this video, I want to talk about a guy that has really impressed me lately with some of the updates that he's been posting. Um, and this is a guy named Vincenzo Masson or Vincenzo Mass Masson, who's sponsored by Animal Pack. A lot of you guys might be familiar with him through animal videos. Um, but in my opinion, this guy is really one of the biggest and most impressive guys that has yet to turn pro. Um, he's still an NPC competitor, so he's not turned pro yet. And this guy is just insanely impressive. I mean, the size of this guy, I believe he's about 315 pounds in this video that you're watching right here hitting these back shots. And this guy is just gigantic. I mean, watching him hit some of these back shots here, he really reminds me of a guy like Big Rami. He's very similar in size. Um, and really... I think he has a tremendous amount of potential. It's just a matter of him coming in condition. Based on some of the contest photos that I've seen of him at recent NPC shows, it seems to me that the main thing he struggles with is that conditioning. And if this guy ever comes in shape, I think a pro card um, is certainly no far stretch for him because he's insanely impressive. And again, he's only 26 years old, so he's just a year older than me. So I think he has a tremendous amount of time, a tremendous amount of potential. And I think one day he's going to be an IFBB pro that's going to do some damage. I think this guy is one of the next guys that you know we should be watching out for um, getting that pro card eventually. So I just wanted to give him a shout out in this video because I'm really excited to see what he's going to do in the future. And just kind of aware you guys that this guy is out there because I think really he's, he's one of the biggest guys in the NPC right now. All right, so the final story that I have for you guys today is probably the biggest athlete that Redcon 1 has ever signed in terms of sheer followers, engagement, um, and just popularity overall. That is Men's Physique IFBB Pro Jeff Side. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with Jeff. Um, he has 3.7 million followers on Instagram, over a million followers on YouTube, uh, making him the biggest athlete that Redcon 1 has ever signed. And his engagement is just absolutely off the charts. I mean, pretty much every photo that he posts um, gets like a quarter million likes, thousands of comments. And to be completely honest with you guys, I really hadn't been keeping up with Jeff side. I mean, I watched some of his videos maybe back in like 2011. I remember when he was sponsored by MHP, but I really hadn't followed him or really kept up with what he's been doing lately because he hasn't really been uh, competing. So I really had not that much interest, to be honest with you guys, but I think it's a big deal for Redcon 1 to sign a guy like this because this guy is one of the most popular, and I hate this word, influencers in the fitness industry. He's probably one of the top 10 you know, biggest followings in fitness today, and I think Redcon 1 did a very good job in signing him, so I'm going to go ahead and roll his video here, uh, signing the Redcon contract. What's up, guys? Jeff Side here. I have a huge announcement to make. Every single day, I'm always going to hit up by companies that want to sponsor me. I never respond to these companies because I don't believe in the brand, I don't like the products, so why would I rep a company I don't believe in? I wouldn't. You guys already know that I'm very picky with who I work with because not just personally, I don't want to work with a company I don't believe in, but for you guys, I'm not going to promote products I don't like to you. That wouldn't be fair to you, so I would never do that. Recently, I've been talking to the owner of Redcon 1, Aaron Singerman. I've been friends with him for a while, and he sent me some of the products, and I absolutely love the products. Everything was incredible. By far the best products I've tried in this industry by far. 
So I figured, why not work with this company? I haven't had a sponsorship in five years. I believe in them, I like their products. So I'm thinking, let's do it. Let's make this official. I got the contract right here. Let's do it, baby. There we go. I'm officially part of Redcon 1. Good to be on the team. So that about wraps it up for the video today, guys. Again, to remind you guys, this weekend is the Mr. Cincinnati Natural Competition, which is one of the longest running competitions in history. I believe this year is the 79th annual Mr. Cincinnati Bodybuilding Competition. This competition has been around for a while. It's local to me, so I've been going for years. I've got a buddy competing in this show. And I did a vlog last year about the Mr. Cincinnati and some of the natural competitors that were competing there. And it went over very, very well. A lot of you guys really enjoyed that video. So I'm going to be doing another vlog this weekend very similar to that, um, kind of going over the same types of things. Showing you guys the behind the scenes stuff of a natural competitor prepping for a show like this. I'm going to show you guys my buddy practicing his prosing routine, putting on the pro tan, what he's eating, what he's doing, how he's feeling, um, and then show you guys the actual show. I think it's really kind of a good behind the scenes thing to show natural competitors to give people a realistic expectation um, of what they can expect before doing their first natural bodybuilding show. So that will be this weekend. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification button if you have not already so you don't miss that video. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.